Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're so glad you're able to join us tonight. All the family of Northgate and friends of Northgate, we're so glad you're with us. We always appreciate the fact that uh, even though you may not go to Northgate, you many of you are tuning in on Wednesday nights as we're studying the Word of God. Uh, tonight we're going to be at the uh, tail end of chapter 9 of Hebrews. Uh, we went through uh, to verse 14 uh, last week. So if you're taking notes, <clears throat> uh, number one, there's going to be two, two main points uh, tonight. Number one is Christ brings us into the new agreement. Remember, we've been talking about this new agreement. So let's take our Bibles and let's... Uh, Let's pick up at verse 15, and we'll go through to uh, verse 22. <clears throat> it says, That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people, so that all who are called can receive the uh, eternal inheritance that God promised them. For Christ died to set them free, from the penalty of the sins that they committed under the first covenant. Now, when someone leaves a will, it is necessary to prove that that person who made it is dead. The will uh, goes into effect only after the person's death, while the person who made it is still uh, while the person who made it is still alive. The will cannot be put into effect. That is why even the first covenant was uh, put into effect with the blood of an animal. For after Moses uh, had read each of the commandments to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats along with water and sprinkled them both, uh, sprinkled both the book of the law and the people using hyssop branches and scarlet wool. He said, then he said, this blood confirms the covenant that God has made with you. And in the same way, he sprinkled blood on the tabernacle and on everything used for worship. In fact, according uh, to the law of Moses, nearly uh, everything that was, uh, that was uh, purified, everything that was purified with blood, for without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So, uh, Christ brings us uh, into a, a, a new agreement here. Uh, at the end of verse 14, if you remember last week, it says that Christ offered himself as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And verse 15 picks up and says, that is why he is the one who mediates uh, this new covenant between God and people. So the per it took a perfect sacrifice to be able to go to the to the throne of heaven before God. It took a perfect, sinless sacrifice, and that is why it is Christ who mediates. He goes before us, between, between us and God. It is Jesus who makes us clean from sin, the author is saying here. He's the one who brings us into, an, into a new agreement, a new covenant with God. Now it was the blood that it was the blood that was the price uh, that was to be paid to to make us free, and uh, and and as we'll see, uh, Jesus and His sacrifice, His blood was the perfect sacrifice. Now they used blood before. The sacrifice of Jesus was for the people who were living under the uh, old law and under the new agreement. How many know that sometimes it's difficult to um, to break from old traditions? And, and and I think the writer of Hebrews, as he's writing to to uh, the Jewish people, uh, it, there he he he's making he's making a point that you're following old traditions. You need to know that there's been a break in the old traditions. We now have a new agreement, and that was through the blood of Christ. Now, many of them believe that, but many of them were still, as we've said over and over again, still hanging on to some of the old traditions of the Jewish law. It's, it was very difficult, and it still remains very difficult for, for many uh, uh, Jewish people to break from the old traditions and uh, understand that there is a new agreement between us and God, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. 
Um, and, and also, it is, it's as well for us uh, who live under the new agreement today, not just back then as the writer was writing to the Hebrews, but even for us today, there, we have to understand that there is a new agreement. Because the way to heaven is the same for all whom God calls. The way to heaven is the same. There is only one way to get to God, and that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. All who trust in Jesus, the Scripture is telling us here, uh, all who trust in Jesus will have a place in heaven. This sacrifice, it frees us from those uh, dead-end efforts that we make to try to make ourselves respectable to God. Those, those, those efforts, are, those efforts are, are dead ends. Uh, heaven will always be our final home, our final destination. In verses 16 and 17, here it says, the writer speaks of someone who leaves a will, someone who leaves a will. And it has to do with what happens to a person's property when he or she passes away. While that person is still alive, it said there in verses 16 and 17, the agreement uh, or the will has no value. As long as the person is alive, that, that, that agreement has no value. Uh, but it's only, it, it's, it's only when the person dies that they get, to, they get to inherit what has been left to them. Uh, those who would benefit from the will uh, have to uh, have to show the maker of the will or the agreement. They have to show that they're dead. I remember when my my uh, mother and father passed away, and I was the executor of their will. There were certain things that I had to present to certain entities that they actually were that they actually were deceased. And as as I did that, uh, then we we were able to receive what we needed. Uh, from from those particular entities, so you had to you had to show proof of death. Those who would benefit from the from from those uh, things uh, needed to show that the person was was gone, and only then can they take possession of the things that were left to them. The death of Jesus is what marked the transition from the old agreement to the new one. The new agreement canceled the old obligations and it made a way for us to inherit eternal life that was promised to us. In verse 18, the writer reminds us that even the first plan required blood in the first plan. All, all, all the activities of the, of the priests and the high priests, it, it required blood, a blood sacrifice. Uh, it, it required a death so it, 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 for the people who were receiving forgiveness or the covering of their sins, it required a death, and that was a death of an animal. And then from the, animal, uh, from the animal's death came the blood, and there was a blood sacrifice. In verses 19 and 20, it says, So when Moses received the first agreement, it says that he did two things. First, he read out loud... God's laws or the Ten Commandments. And uh, these were commands that, that God said the people must obey. He made sure, Moses also made sure, that they understood what God was asking them to do. And so as you go through the Ten Commandments, you, know, see, you can see that God requires, uh, from the law there, God requires them to to, to obey him, to honor him only, to make him the only one, one and true God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, and so on and so forth. And so there were all the, there were all the laws, and Moses wanted them to understood uh, what God was requiring of them. He told them of all the good that would come to them if they obeyed the laws. And uh, he also told them of the punishment that would follow if they chose not to obey the laws. And so that's why, that's why when, when the priest would go in once a year on the Day of Atonement, it was really a covering 
of their sins at that time. It wouldn't take long for them to go back out and commit sins again, but they had to wait a whole year. Then he took the blood. It says that he took the blood of young goats. This, this is the high priest, young goats and cows using red wool and, and uh, hyssop. Hyssop is a type of plant, is an aromic type of plant. They use it for cooking. They also use it for medicinal purposes. And, uh, he, they would, and it was, it was a, like a branch, and they would take this hyssop branch, dip it in the blood and in the water, and they would, they would sprinkle it first on the book of the law. So in other words, it, was, it wouldn't have been the, uh, the stone commandments. They were inside the Ark of the Covenant. We talked about that last week. But this was probably a scroll that, that the priest would take and he would sprinkle the blood on the scroll. He told the people that they must do all that God commanded them. This, uh, 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 he, uh, uh, he dipped it in the blood, sprinkled it on the book of the law. He also sprinkled it on the people. Uh, so the people who were standing there before he would go into the holy place. This was to wash all the things that, made, um, th that would make them clean at the beginning of an agreement. So in other words, they were making an agreement with God. God says, here's my law, and you're being sprinkled with the blood. The blood is being sprinkled upon the scroll. The blood, the, the, the blood would also uh, be sprinkled on the tent. Uh, uh, that the tent I, that I showed you last week, along with the pr along with many of the instruments that the priest used during worship, so blood was shed. Verse twenty two. What Moses was saying was that this is the blood of the covenant that God has made with you. God is making a covenant with you. Practically everything in a will hinges on death. Uh, that's why the blood was the evidence of death. God used blood. Uh, you know, if you go back to the third chapter, second chapter of Genesis, and after Adam and Eve had sinned, and they were there in the garden, they were hiding uh, from God, uh, the, scripture, the scripture tells us that they had sewn together fig leaves, to cover their nakedness. Uh, they didn't realize they were naked until they sinned, until they disobeyed God. But something happened after that. The Bible, the Bible says that, 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 um, that there was a, the shedding of blood of an animal and he took the skins of the animal and he clothed Adam and Eve with those skins. That's the first indication that we have that, that blood was used and, and uh, the shedding of blood was used to cover the sins of the people. And uh, this is the blood of the covenant uh, as the writer of Hebrews was talking to, to the Hebrew people. He said, this is the covenant of the blood uh, that God, the, the blood of the covenant that God has made with you. And it was also used uh, so much for Jewish tradition. And, um, and especially when it came to the forgiveness of sin, blood was also used during that time. Number two, if you're taking notes, the perfect sacrifice. Uh, that's number two. This is verses 23 through the end of the chapter. So let's pick it up at verse 23. It says, that is why the tabernacle and everything uh, in it, which were, the, uh, which were copies of the things in heaven... And it had to be purified by the blood of animals. But the real things in heaven had to be purified with a far better sacrifice than the blood of animals. For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the true one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself to appear now before God on our behalf. He did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again, such as the priest did, like, like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place year after year with the blood, of, uh, the blood of an animal. If that had been necessary, Christ would have had to die again and again 
ever since the world began, but now, once and for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes a judgment, so also Christ died once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who eagerly wait for him. What, what a tremendous uh, portion of scripture. Um, the tent, um, yeah, the tent or the tabernacle and everything in it, it says that they were just copies of the real thing in heaven. They had to be clean. There had to be blood applied to each of those objects. But the blood of goats and cows, he says here in in the verses we just read, he says that the blood of cows and goats could never clean what was in heaven. Never. There needed to be a much better sacrifice than that of animals. In verse 24, the work of Jesus is, he says, was not in a tent that people had made here on earth. He went, it says that he went home to heaven to his father on behalf of all of us, his people. Now the scripture says he now stands before God to pray for all of us who have put our trust in him. In other words, all of us who have who have uh, received Jesus Christ, we repented of our sins. We asked him to forgive us of our sins. His blood is now applied to our sins. Once, that death that he died once. And uh, he, he now stands before God and he prays for us, all of us who have put our trust in him. Verses 25 and 26, uh, the... The writer wants us to remember that that the high priest went into the Holy of Holies once a year. He went in again with the blood of animals. He did not go in with his own blood, but the blood of animals. But Jesus gave his own blood and not the blood of animals. See, when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, it wasn't that he shed his blood, but when Jesus went before God, it was because he shed his blood. He got into, he got into the heavenlies where he, is, he now mediates, the scripture says, between us and God. If the blood that the high priest offered, it says, if it could take away the sins, he would not have to go into the Holy of Holies every year. The priest only offered covering for the sins. In contrast, the blood of Jesus did take away our sins once and for all. In other words, he did it once and it was for all. So Jesus does not have to make a sacrifice for our sins over and over like the, like the high priest did. Can you see what the writer of Hebrews is trying to emphasize to those who were his hearers, those who were listening to this letter? He's telling them there's a new and better way. There's a new and better sacrifice. Uh, you, may still be, you may still be honoring those Those traditions, he's saying, you may still be going through those ceremonies, but understand this, you don't have to do that anymore. Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, shed his blood once, and it was for all who would receive him. He died one death for us, and then he rose to life again. He's paid the price for our sins, both now and forever. In verse 27, uh, the writer reminds us that all of us are destined to die once. It is appointed unto man once to die, then after that, the scripture says, the judgment. But the death of the body is not the end. The real us, our spirit will live on forever with God. 
I, but people say, well, are we going to know people when we get to heaven? Listen, I got to tell you, I've always believed this and believe this to this day, that God is so into relationships. He is not going to, he is not going to uh, uh, hold that back from us. We're going to be able to know each other. I really believe that. Not as we see each other now, but at a spirit level. The writer reminds us that all of us are destined to die once. But again, the, the, the death of the body is not the end. After death, it says that we must all give an account before God. There were, but there he will, uh, there he will judge us and, 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 and decide our future. Verse 28 says it was the same for Jesus. Uh, he came as a human being and died, uh, but his death was different than ours. He did not have to die because he was perfect. Jesus didn't have to die, but he did for the sacrifice of our sins. Blood had to be shed. That's how, that's how God rolls. That's how he operates. Blood had to be shed, and there had to be a perfect sacrifice. He took his sinless son and offered him as our sacrifice. Unlike us, Jesus doesn't wait for the uh, judgment of God. He rose from the dead, and that was proof. Him rising from the dead was proof that he satisfied God. He satisfied God. God said, that's, that's enough. That's enough for the sins of the entire world. My perfect son giving his, giving his life. So Jesus, he will come back someday. And when he does, he will not have to do anything more about our sin, your sin and my sin, uh, because he has already done that. He died once and for all. That's why it's so important that we believe on him. That is why, that's why it's so important that we receive him as our savior, that we repent of our sins. That when he does come back, he's not coming back to judge us for our sins because he's, that's already been done. Our sins have been paid for. When, when, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he, he, you know, uh, he, 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 said, uh, he said that it was paid in full. It is finished, he said, is, what he, is the words he used. It is finished. It's paid in full. Our salvation will be, will, will be absolutely complete when we go to heaven. It's complete now, but it'll even be more complete when we get to heaven and, uh, and be with him forever. So that's the end of uh, chapter 9. Uh, again, so excited that you're able to be with us. We're going to dive into chapter 10. Chapter 10 looks like a pretty extensive chapter, so we may have to split it uh, in, in two parts also. But uh, join us next week and uh, as we study uh, Hebrews chapter 10. If you can be with us on Sunday, we, you know, we have some people coming back. Uh, already uh, f feeling safe. Some people have got their vaccinations and, and we continue to remain safe. We continue to social distance. We continue to wear masks uh, and everything that, that we're supposed to do. So uh, feel free to join us and um, love to see you. God bless you. Have a great night and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.